And H.R. 25, the fair tax, is the most comprehensive recognition that we can do away with the income tax. We can repeal the 16th Amendment that even made the income tax possible in this country. We can return to a consumption tax so that we all have skin in the game in how this government is, is run and operated. We can ensure the solvency of Social Security and Medicare by changing the way we collect the revenue stream for those programs. We can put more money in workers' pockets by eliminating the largest tax that 85% of American families pay in eliminating that FICA tax. We can put America back on top economically as we tried to do in 1986 as we saw happen during the 1990s as a result of those tax code changes. And we can return America to being an exporter to the world, not just an importer from the world. Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to have that debate. If someone believes that disadvantaging the American worker is valuable in some way, let's talk about it. If someone sees a, a hidden benefit to making it harder for the rest of the world to buy American goods, let's talk about it. And let me understand those benefits with you. But if you share my vision of American exceptionalism, that being in the top five isn't good enough, that being number one, being the leader, being the definer of success is the only thing that's going to be good enough for the families that each and every one of us represent, then go back and look at H.R. 25 one more time. I understand having just passed tax uh, reform, the largest tax reform in a generation, folks wonder if we're able to, to do even more we can. I understand that having this tax day be the very last tax day that any American family has to deal with the old complicated code, folks wonder, can we do even better for next tax year? We've already done better for next tax year, Mr. Speaker, but we can do even more. I just want you to know, Mr. Chairman, uh, that there's still time, uh, that uh, I, I've heard talks about tax reform part two percolating around uh, uh, here and there. And, and if I could just put one thing on the bipartisan uh, uh, plate, one of the things the fair tax deals with that nobody else does is the payroll tax. Of course, it's the largest tax that 85% of American families pay. And if we really want to talk about uh, uh, families and dealing with paychecks in a way that, that, that hits them each and every uh, pay period, uh, we've got to have that uh, payroll tax conversation. We have to have it sooner rather than later because Social Security and, and Medicare aren't going to be able to meet their obligations under the current uh, tax uh, system. Take a look at the fair tax. Dozens upon dozens of your colleagues have already recognized its merits. Dozens upon dozens of your colleagues have already recognized our opportunity to stop fighting the economic battle with one arm tied behind the American workers' back. Uh, I celebrate the success that we achieved together, Mr. Speaker. I celebrate the coming together in the name of making a better economy possible for American workers and their families. Let's take that success and let's build on that success uh, and let's not have this be the last tax day that we celebrate. Let's celebrate today that we will never have to deal with the old tax code again. And let's anticipate that day where we'll never even have tax day again. Because in the absence of an income tax, the American family need never deal with the IRS again. Let's eliminate April 15th as tax day. Let's make it just another beautiful spring day. Uh, let's relieve the American family of the burden of complying with the tax code. Let's free the American family and American businesses to do what's in their own families and their own businesses' best interest. Make tax day just another day, Mr. Speaker. Support the fair tax. With that, I yield back the balance of my time.